Le Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts is dedicated to preparing aspiring professionals in the areas of culinary arts, patisserie and baking, and hospitality and restaurant management. Disaster Planning and Response Art Rescue is a first responder for the world of art, providing planning, packing, evacuation, conservation, and storage for all your treasured possessions. Thanks for joining me on Fear No Art. My name is Elizabeth Alfano. Come with me as we go behind the scenes and get into the hearts and minds and souls of the creative genius. So we're standing under the 9094 viaduct in front of the studio of Thomas McDonald. Tom uses found objects in his sculpture and I'm very excited to go in and check it out. But Tom has no landline and he has no cell phone. So he told me to just wait under the viaduct and he'd come get me. So hopefully he'll come and get me. Tom! Oh! Hey! Hi, that, how are you? That did work. Well, thanks for coming to get me. You're welcome. I realize we are literally under the 9094 viaduct. Mm -hmm. I've never even known that this part of the city existed. Right, no, not too many people do. It's not even a street. It's just we're literally under the viaduct. Mm -hmm. Well, cool, and your studio's on the third floor. Uh -huh. You want to take us there? Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, and these old elevators. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Wonderful. Thanks for bringing us to your studio. Yeah, and this is my spot in the middle. I share the space with another person in front here. And two people in the back. This is all your stuff? Yeah. Huh. It's all collected, found in the alley. How do you make heads or tails of it? Uh, well, it's all material, you know. Because there must be 10 years of stuff. Yeah, at least. It's six, I think I've been here 16 years. 16 years of stuff. And you've been most of it metal. Although, no, I saw some plastic. Yeah, there's some... plastic. There's an experiment, a wood, you know, whatever, you know, as I go along, whatever I think right. is what, a good idea. Right. I try it. Where do you usually find most of it? I usually, uh, well, it's just good exercise. I ride my bike, and I live in Oak Park, so I ride up and down the alley. You find this stuff in Oak Park? Yeah. <laughs> Berwyn is good. It's right across, you know, the town next door. So you go Forest into the Park. You don't rip things off people's houses. No. You go into the alley. That's my joke. I, I always say, <laughs> I think they were throwing it away. Like, so, this is a nice find here, you know. And you got that out of the garbage can, or? No, I was laying it. I, I've learned not to dig, don't open the garbage can. Uh -huh. Okay. If it's by the garbage can, then it's yours. Okay, if you now, open the garbage can, you're asking for trouble. If I was in an alley and I saw you ride on your bike uh -huh. with a bunch of metal, I think I might be slightly afraid. Oh, yeah, there's nothing scarier than me riding the bike down the alley with a pitchfork. <laughs> yes. Can you see it when you pick something from an alley? Do you have a vision like, oh, I know where that's going to go, or I need this for a nose, or. Sometimes I'm looking specifically for stuff. Yeah. You know, one guy was here once and looking at the art, and he's like, you know, he kind of made stuff from junk as well, you know, and, you know, I was talking to him. He didn't have a big enough pile, it's and therefore he didn't have enough choices. So with a lot of junk, you have more choices to make. Right. You know, and, and so is it, you know, like this probably needs like a collarbone, so is it, does this work or this work? Or, you know, whatever, you know, is it a piece of pie? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the beauty of assemblage. You don't have to commit to it, I just hold it up there. Right. And yeah, see. Yeah, that, that might work, but that's galvanized. Yeah, that's true. That's, if you don't like it, if you yeah. don't like and it, you so just take it off. If I only had one piece, right. then I gotta use You're that. Stuck. But believe it or not, I know where everything is. Okay, now how did you come to this? How did it how did it get to this? I mean, you must have been working with tools and just, you know, always fixing things in your own basement, or how did you come to this? Oh, yeah, the, it's part of my upbringing, working with tools. I think I was expected to know how to do that. My father, my grandfather. Both of my grandfathers were mechanics. Uh -huh. This piece, my grandfather rode motorcycles, raced motorcycles, way before. Actually, when he got married to my grandma, that all stopped. <laughs> but uh, uh, I kind of a piece? tribute oh, to him. You made this him. as a tribute yeah. to him. And uh, so that's why it's called the lore, like folklore. And, and where do you get your inspiration? Does it come from just roaming the alleys and you see things? Or where do you really get that 
God, I've got to say this, or I want to say this. Well, I think that that is pretty well thought out, that it does have to do with, uh, you know, maybe it's like the story of me growing up. I never intended to be an artist. I kind of end you up didn't. being one. And so, you know, somewhere along the line, I didn't have any, you know, constructive way to express myself. And then as I went to school and stuff and took art classes, I think I found it. Right. And I think it was really important to me to, you know, just have that way to say I'm here or whatever. I mean, right. I think it's all deep down, like the Freudian ego thing, like, hey, look at me. So do you sell things? Do you care about the collecting public? Yeah, you know, I, I like to try to make a living at it. I also teach. So, so that's how I make my living. I, I just don't want to step on your plate. Yeah, let me move another no, one. No, no, it's fine. So you you can make a living at this. Absolutely. You do. You yeah. do. And through teaching, but also through selling your artwork. Yeah. And so like this piece is a commission for a lady yeah. uh, named Jan up in Island Lake, Illinois. It's going to be like a, a boy flying a kite. Oh, Here's so like the kite string. Okay. Oh, great. Great, and, and so then this will go in her garden with her others. Yeah, Thomas and she's Donald's gotten a bunch of them over the, uh, <clears throat> today. I don't want you to lose this one piece because you no, need that's it okay. for your kite. Okay, well. There you um, go, now you got it. <laughs> well, really, this is a point of privilege because so many Definitely. people would love to express themselves and just feel that they have a message to say about their own backgrounds, but they don't. They're stepping into a cubicle from nine to five. So really, you have, you know, finagled through I'm very lucky that I and yeah. you're selling that you can do this. Yeah, I, I I often think of that, you know, I mean, you know how people, you know, you think about your life and it's hard, it's been a struggle, but you know, compared to a, a whole lot of people I really haven't made. Yeah, it is a privilege to make this stuff. And to just be in your own space with your own junk and do your own thing all day long. Yeah, I do like that, yes. definitely. Well, we like it too. Thank Good. you so much for letting me be here. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this Thank has been you. just a treat for me. I hope I haven't messed anything up put anything out of place. I don't know if that's possible. No, that's not possible. <laughs> There's an artist and a creative spirit around every corner. Join me on the next Fear No Art as we get into the unique and fascinating world of the independent artist.